This session is banded fertility for every pass. My name is Corey Mulbauer. I'm an agronomist in the R&D department at Precision Planting. Also speaking to you in this session is going to be Matt Morgan, an engineer at Precision Planting, and also Will Frank is an engineer at Precision Planting. We're going to cover all the opportunities that you have on your farm to increase the efficiency of fertilizer so that you can gain yield and gain profitability through placement and timing of that fertilizer. But I want to start with the groundwork of how nutrients actually get to our plants. It starts with the soil. Soil is a massive chemical and biological ecosystem. It has a great amount of control over what our plants do and don't receive. 100% of the plant's water and nutrition that it needs throughout the season has to pass through the soil before it gets to the root system of the crop and ultimately provides the crop with what it needs to achieve the highest yield potential that we can get out of it. So when we talk about the soil, in just one acre, six inches deep of soil is two million pounds of material. In that two million pounds, there's roughly 50,000 pounds of potassium, 6,000 pounds of nitrogen, and 3,000 pounds of phosphorus on every single acre but yet our plants don't have access to most of that. In fact, less than 1% of those total nutrients are actually available to the plant any one day, any one hour during the growing season. Where those nutrients are is they're tied up in the soil particles themselves and in the organic matter. They're little sand particles in your soil profile. It's the clay content in your soil that has negative charges that attract and lock up a lot of the nutrients that are in the soil. And then it's also the organic material in the, in the soil as well. The organic material has that nutrient locked up in a form that's just not accessible yet. There's active living microbial ecosystems in the soil, and those are also consuming the organic matter. And while they're doing that, they might create some release to the plants, but when they're working hard and breaking down that organic material, they're also feeding on the available nutrients, the same nutrients that your plants need access to. So they're actually in competition with your plants during certain times of the season for those available nutrients to give them some energy as well. How does your plants in your crop get access to nutrients? The number one way is water flow and diffusion. Diffusion from higher concentrations to lower concentrations, and water flow is driven off of your crop's respiration. Respiration is your plants exhaling and breathing. And when they exhale, water molecules and oxygen are leaving the plant. The higher the rate of respiration, the more water that flows from the soil into the root system and up through that plant. And as that water moves through the soil and into the root system, it picks up a few nutrient molecules along the way. And this mass flow process is how our plants get their primary nutrients. Now this whole process is heavily dependent on the weather patterns that your crop is experiencing. So the temperature, the sunlight, the rainfall patterns that you're getting during any time of the year has a strong influence on how efficient this mass flow system is at giving your plants what they need. Another way that your plants get access to nutrients, but it's in a much, much smaller volume than mass flow, is the root microbiome. This microbiome is also known as the rhizosphere. The rhizosphere is a complementary interaction between the living, growing plant and the microbial colony in the soil. The fungi and the microbes are stimulated by sugars, proteins, and enzymes that are released by the plant's roots. The plant actually has the ability to influence this ecosystem to help provide some of the nutrients that would otherwise not be available. But again, just like the mass flow of water, this rhizosphere is also heavily dependent on its productivity based on the weather patterns that your crop is receiving. So sometimes it may not be that efficient at providing the plant with what it needs. So through generations of farming and the history of how we manage our crops, we've learned that if we apply fertilizer, we can change the density of available nutrients in the field. The number one way that we do this across the world is by broadcasting DAP, potash, phosphorus, potassium, the nutrients that are needed for our plants at a primary high level. The thing is, is those nutrients 
really aren't that high a volume on a per acre basis. When we think about numbers we relate to today, DAP is commonly applied at a rate of 150 pounds per acre in a corn crop. Remember, that's on 2 million pounds of soil mass. Have you ever thought of how much actually needs to be applied on a plant-by-plant -plant basis? At a 36,000 population in a cornfield, when you do the math, only four one-thousandths of a pound of DAP is applied on a per-plant level. To put it in perspective, we weighed some DAP in the lab here, and it's actually only six granulars of DAP fertilizer plant by plant. Is our application equipment, our monitoring capability, our measuring capability of the soil and our nutrient program really able to manage to this level of small amount of fertilizer on a per plant basis? Are we providing every plant it needs the adequate nutrients on a per plant level? The other thing about our applied fertilizers is this massive soil ecosystem that I'm talking about also is a major consumer of the fertilizer that we apply. So when you broadcast fertilizer, a small percentage is actually left behind for the plants to get access to because the majority is tied up in the mineral, the organic matter, and the microbial ecosystem of the soil. This process is also very dependent on the weather patterns that our crop is experiencing on any day of the season. A better method of managing nutrition, and we've learned this through generations of farming, is to combine the efforts of measuring the soil and managing a balance of nutrients in the soil, and primarily this is from broadcasted applications, but also banding some of the nutrients that our crops critically need in season in a place that the roots have easy access to those nutrients. At Precision Planting, we've done a lot of research on how to better place fertilizer to increase the efficiency of that fertilizer, and we've come up with this five-point placement of bands near the row. Phosphorus near the seed for those early growing roots. Nitrogen three inches to the side to help out with accessibility to nitrogen and sulfur. We've created two application products, FurrowJet and Conceal, that help us achieve this placement on the planter, and we've been selling this for a few seasons now. When you watch the location of these fertilizers get applied, FurrowJet is the one placing the three bands colored in red there on the screen. This is an optimum place for phosphorus and micronutrients. Off to the side, the blue bands are three inches away, and that's optimum placement for sulfur and nitrogen type products that are fairly mobile in the soil. Through the years of researching better fertilizer placement and, under, and learning about the yield and the efficiencies of those fertilizer placements, we did a lot of trials. And in those trials, we simply took the typical fertilizer application methods that local farmers here were using, and we shifted some of those pounds of nutrients from the broadcasted preseason applications to the planter pass so that we could learn what that efficiency value could mean to you. So we've got eight years of data, multiple trials per year, and we're gonna look at a summary of those eight years of our findings. Year number one, we got 20 bushel advantage in corn and a $50 per acre increase in profitability when we started banding some phosphorus with FurrowJet. The second year was quite a bit different. Only three bushel per acre and $10 an acre on profitability, but that's because we had significantly different weather years. 2015 was obviously a challenging year for nutrient availability. And as we moved through the years, we saw repeated positive results to banding some nutrition with the planter with FurrowJet. And our eight year average has, is now nine bushel per acre and $34 an acre increase in profitability when you move some of your broadcasted phosphorus to that planter pass with FurrowJet. We also study nitrogen. And for seven years, we've been looking at different nitrogen programs that band different amounts of your total program. So when we do this, all of the reps in the field are getting the same total N in pounds per acre, but it's how and when we apply it that we're studying. The blue bar on the left is an all broadcast preseason application. The orange bar in the middle is a 50-50 split between the broadcasted weed and feed preseason and a side dress pass um, in mid-season with a coulter applicator. And then on the far right, that gray bar with the highest yield advantage 
is moving 25% of the total nitrogen program to the planter and applying it with conceal on each side of the row. The thing to take home is this is a seven year average. And after seven years, we're averaging an $83 an acre difference in profitability in the nitrogen program just by shifting how and when you place that fertilizer. So there's big opportunities in improving your fertilizer program with timing and placement. We also learned through this research that there's some issues with the standard liquid fertilizer control and monitoring systems. We caught product row by row on the planter that was applying liquid and we realized that a traditional system has as much as 27% error in rate on a row by row basis. Out in the field as you're operating, when you change speeds, we found that there's as much as a 21% error in accuracy of rate applied just based on that traditional system not being able to adjust for ground speed. So we came out with a system integrated with 2020 that gives us more accuracy and more visibility of performance. The EMHD modules on a row gives us row by row monitoring with a flow sensor and control of rate with a ball valve so that we achieve row by row swath, row by row rate adjustment, and row by row monitoring so that we always know if there's a pinch line or a plugged nozzle that's gonna cause a rate issue for our system. We didn't stop with just studying individual fertilizers and the value of shifting those from broadcast to banded applications. We also looked at what does it mean to a farmer who fully integrates his fertilizer system with some amount of banding across the board with his nutrients that he applies. So in these trials, we looked at the traditional broadcast management methods versus a banded application method, but also shifting the total program nutrients because we know we have a more efficient placement method, we probably don't need the same total amount of fertilizer in the field. We do that by adjusting the P and K levels that we're applying. When you put together a nutrient recommendation, you measure the soil with a soil test. Like in the radical session, you learned about the value of knowing your soil nutrient levels and how important that is. When you write a rec off of that, you have to decide what portion of your total program is feeding the crop for that season and what portion of your fertilizer investment is adjusting the soil nutrient levels so that you can keep them balanced. So what we did in the banded program blocks in this scenario is we shifted our soil build maintenance level down a little bit because we don't have to rely on high soil test levels. We have those banded nutrients to trust that we're gonna get our plants what they need. And after five years, three fields, multiple different environments, some irrigated, some non-irrigated, heavy black soil, sandy soils, these green bars represent the increase in profitability with the banding program versus the broadcast program. And then when we average all that together, five years of data is showing us that there's an $88 per acre opportunity to increase your profit in your investment in fertilizer. This data represents the current 2024 price of fertilizer and the commodities. But what about granular fertilizer? Most of what we've studied and learned up to this point has been liquid fertilizer on planters and side dress bars. We know that around the world, granular fertilizer is the number one fertilizer by volume. In fact, it's significantly greater by volume globally. And there's regions in North America where you don't have good access to options in the liquid fertilizer space. So we're also studying opportunities in banding versus broadcast granular systems so that we can also learn for ourselves and also for you what that opportunity might look like. Up at the PTI farm, Jason Webster has started a multi-year granular versus broadcast trial. We're using a strip till applicator to do the study uh, to better understand this opportunity. This is the data from the first three seasons of the granular banded versus broadcast. And the green bars, again, represent the increased profit in the banded programs. Across the bottom, you see the different rate programs. So the 100% on the left represents the full fertilizer program. And then we reduce the rate to 75, 50, and 25% of that full program. So you can see the difference in opportunity with rate along with placement. And the highest ROI of the program so far is banded 
granular fertilizer at the 75% rate, giving us the most profit. So there's big opportunities across the board on fertilizer applications, whether you're liquid or you're dry. But when we see those big opportunities in dry, let's go back and think about how are we applying it and what kind of equipment technology do we have today? Do we have accurate metering and monitoring systems on our granular application equipment? So I'm gonna invite Matt up and he's gonna dig deep into the mechanics of some granular fertilizer equipment so you can better understand it. Thanks, Corey. Well, what I'd like to do in this portion of our session is go back to a chart that Justin McMenemy shared this morning in the keynote. And for us at Precision Planting, this diagram truly speaks to how we want to bring innovative solutions to your operation. But here's the question. What does it look like to take this same product development approach and apply it to farms, to operations outside of North America? I'm excited to share with you during this session how we're taking this proven approach, one that many of you have benefited with through the products on your operation, and apply it now to the unique environment outside of North America. Specifically, as we think about dry fertilizer, and Corey mentioned it earlier, many of these farms are exclusively dry. And the optimum moment to apply that fertilizer is the planter pass, using a gravity system. Now I had the privilege to live in Argentina for almost three years. And over the past six years, I have spent a tremendous amount of time on farms in Brazil and Argentina. And it has been tremendous to be with farmers just like you trying to grow better crops. And we have learned a ton through those experiences. In fact, one of my favorite memories from this time is gathering around the fire, enjoying an asado, an Argentinian barbecue, and talking through how we can get better in the operations at hand. Well, let's go back to that planter. And here we find a John Deere 2100 series planter in Brazil. And you can see those big bulk tanks full of dry fertilizer. And each of those tanks has maybe four or five outlets with an individual meter on each outlet. And those meters are connected by a common shaft that's spun by either a ground tire, maybe a hydraulic motor. And of course, as that product flows out of the meter, it's gonna use gravity to make its way down to the ground. And then at the ground, you can see here in the photo, double discs, maybe there's a ripper shank, even a coulter, to band that fertilizer into the soil. And the question that has been nagging in the back of my mind over all these years is how do we know that we're getting the right product from that tank to the ground? And of course, if we look at the status quo, this is what we find. It's a familiar story, isn't it? You start with some kind of drive system, maybe it's ground tires, or maybe it's that hydraulic drive, and you've got a series of gears and chains that then connect to that meter and you hope that the pocket of that meter has the capacity fit for the operation you're running. And of course, you put some bags on each outlet, you catch, you weigh, and with that in mind, you now feel like you have confidence that you're gonna get that rate right. But we started to think about this gravity granular application and ask ourselves, is there a better way and we knew from our experiences with V-Drive in the seeding arena that an electric row-by-row -row metering system has tremendous benefits and a huge impact, not only on the operational efficiency, but on stewarding these input costs. So, with that in mind, we took off this last spring with our first prototypes. And you can see here, there was one little problem. In North America, we don't have those big bulk tanks a lot of times. We've got these insecticide boxes. No problem, let's get the sawzall out, cut that hole in there, shoehorn this meter in, and see what we can learn. And while we're at it, let's see, is there any benefit to a low rate dry fertilizer application in furrow? Maybe five or 10 pounds, and you can add your secret sauce, your special blend. Could we get some type of starter response, some yield boost, from this low rate dry fertilizer application. But again, our main objective here was to start learning and accelerate the development of this meter for applications in the Southern Hemisphere. 
Well, we pulled into that first field excited and we're doing different rates and trying to test this meter. And where did we end up? 11 o'clock at night on the porch, floodlights out, what went wrong? And of course, as we're bouncing through that field, our center idler gear, it was a 3D print, and so that thing got all torqued sideways. We're not spinning right. What are we gonna do? But friends, when the precision engineer is near, never fear. A little bit of epoxy and a hair dryer, and we are back up and running in no time flat. So we had a lot of fun this last spring in North America learning about how to make an electric drive granular meter. But we didn't stop there, we packed our bags, we headed down to South America, to Brazil and Argentina, to see in that real environment, in the daily operation of farms across Southern Hemisphere, what could we learn? What is the true rotor variability, the real distribution on these machines? And at the same time, we realized, wow, South America is a far drive to get to these operations. How can we bring that learning back to Tremont? And so we built this tank, Big Bertha, and we took meters and drive systems and we put them to the test. And we built a custom load cell, able to measure thousands of times per second to see at different rates and different speeds what is the real performance, what is the real amount of product traveling from the tank to the ground. And what did we learn? What were the challenges that we face. Now I'm gonna need your imagination because I wanna take you back down to Brazil and we're on a remote farm. It's an hour from the farm operation back to the main road, let alone to town. And we have had a full day. We're ready for a good meal, a little bit of rest to do it all over again tomorrow. And so as our convoy of three trucks is on this remote road, pitch black, all of a sudden, it's brake lights and we're stopped, dead in our tracks. What is going on? Is it a snake? I mean, we had seen one that morning on the way in. Is it a herd of cattle they'd gotten out of the pen? No, it was 360 row monsters backed up to the haul road, refilling with seed and furt. And these three machines were crawling across the landscape nonstop for the next three days. Can you imagine how much productivity is going on in this farm? But here was the question looming in the back of my mind. 180 outlets across these three planters with three operators doing three different things. How much rotor variation does this farm operation see as they planted their hectares? Another very real challenge are these armadillo caves. Imagine the operator, he's, he's trucking through the field, he's having a great day, he's on Instagram talking about it, maybe he's even getting a little bored so he's on Netflix, and all of a sudden, bam, eight kilometers an hour catches one of these caves. I tell you what, he's gonna be paying attention, isn't he? And so a little later in the field, when he comes to the next cave, what's gonna happen? He's gonna hit that throttle, slow down, and now what goes on with our fertilizer system? What happens to that rate we're trying to apply row by row? So you can start to imagine now some of the very real challenges to hit that sweet spot in our product development chart. So let's talk about some of those things that we learned. First, there's tank level. Of course, we could start the day, the tanks are full, everything looks great. But as the day wears on, what do we see? If you don't have visibility, you don't have any kind of blockage sensor, one row tends to run out faster than the others. And that tank isn't wearing down level. Now that's an indication that something row to row is different. But at the same time, the farmer has no visibility, the operator has no visibility, so he keeps on going and runs out of furt on some of his rows. Another very real challenge, if you've worked with dry fertilizer at all, you get this, is buildup. That humidity changes, you get moisture, and now you've got clumps and rocks and just trouble in the row. And these things are difficult to find and to catch. And so we're excited to have a blockage system now that can tell you even partial blockages in each and every row. Will Frank's gonna talk to that more later in this session. But the last thing, this is a common issue that you guys know so well that drive system maintenance, those gears, those bearings, those chains, 
make a huge impact on the row to row performance of any system. So these were some of the things that we learned. Let's look at some real world examples. Let's go to Argentina and look at one of the first growers that we tested with just a few months ago. And so when we showed up at his farm, here's what his planter looks like. Here's what his metering system out of one of those bulk tanks looks like. He's got a little bit of work to do to get this guy ready to go for planting season. And so he's got to replace some bearings. If you look at that center picture, they're gone. He's got to do some real serious maintenance on these meters. All of this just to get ready to calibrate and go plant. But what if, what if he didn't have to deal with this year over year? What if he just has an electric row by row meter, he bolts that thing on, plugs it in, and off he goes? Seems like a whole lot easier way to get rolling at the beginning of the year. But let's look at the performance of this electric row by row system. Let's head down to Pisome Farms in Para State, Brazil. This is Amazon country, where we're testing on a John Deere 2100 series planter similar to what you've seen in some of the other photos. And this guy's a 34 row planter. And there's 17 rows, there's two frames that are 17 row sections, and those are coupled with a joint frame. And so we could put in a hydraulic conventional system on the one side and compare it to 17 rows of an electric meter on the other side. And thanks to Panorama, and along with Clarity, we're able to see how do those two systems perform in the field. So let's zoom in a little bit here, and you can see in the green, here's our precision electric row by row metering system. And then you can see in the red, these are the rows with that hydraulic standard metering system. And if we take that lasso tool in Panorama and say, I wanna compare one pass of the precision electric to one pass of the hydraulic, what do we find? And so we have our zone defined here with our lasso tool for each of these. And in Panorama, you can use the clarity metric magnitude that Will Frank's gonna describe in just a moment, but it's a measure of the product flowing through that sensor row by row. And it's telling us how much product do we have. And so for the precision electric row by row meter, almost 2400 is the measurement from the sensor. When we compare that to the hydraulic side, 1900. That's a 20% difference. Now I know what you're gonna say, Matt, what about the calibration on these two systems? Let me tell you about that. We calibrated both sides the same. As we looked across Peace Home Farms, we said, hey, 200 kilos per hectare is the average rate across all the fields. Now for those of you who maybe aren't as familiar with kilos per hectare, it's almost the same as pounds per acre. So if you hear me say kilos per hectare, just think pounds per acre, okay? So 200 kilos per hectare was our target rate. That's what we calibrated to. And we calibrated both sides the exact same way. But when we get out into this field, T05, now the needed rate for this particular field is 250 kilos per hectare. You see our application rate changed from that calibration target and we got a different result from the electric meter to the hydraulic. But let's take a closer look Let's go to a farm in Argentina, Alorsa Agro. And these guys are using the metering system on the left. It's a standard meter in Argentina, brand new. And they put that with the best hydraulic system in the market and said, we wanna compare on three rows across a huge range of rates, the performance of what we're doing today with the possibilities of tomorrow. So we did. And before we installed that precision row by row meter, we measured the old system, put the new one on, and we did bag checks at 25, all the way up to 300 kilos per hectare. And we took those three rows and we lumped them together, and that's what you see on the chart here. Now we calibrated at 100, assuming eight kilometers per hour. And notice, both systems are very accurate there. But if we compare these two systems across the rate range, Notice if we lower our target rate, the conventional system starts to over apply. But now if we take and go the other direction and we put more product on, it starts to under apply. It really struggles if it gets outside of the rate range we expected. Meanwhile, notice the precision system in the lighter green. It's steady Freddy. It's staying the same no matter what rate range we're running. Now, again, you might say, Matt, but look at the calibration target, that conventional system is better. 
But remember, look at the target on the screen and those three dots. We haven't compared where that row-to-row -row variability, where the distribution of those points is at. Because if we zoomed in, if we looked closer at that series of measurements, we would find that the conventional system actually has 10% variation row to row. One row was plus 5%, another row was minus 5%, where that precision meter within 1% row to row. You see, when it comes to rate accuracy, we also want to think about distribution, and that's rate precision. And what we found in this study is that the conventional system, on an average, has an error of 4% when it comes to the rate. When we think about precision, that error jumps, it doubles to 8%. So row to row, there can be as much as an 8% difference on that conventional system, whereas for the precision meter, it's 1.5 on the average, but row to row, it's 1.7, it's the same. And so this was so exciting to see that we were able to be precise and accurate in our application of dry fertilizer. Let's take this to the farm operation at Alorsa Agro. They're farming 3,500 hectares of corn, and across those hectares, their average application rate is 100 kilos per hectare. That's 350 tons of fertilizer. And if we take that 4% versus the 1% on precision planting, that's a 3% difference, which is 11 tons of misapplied product. If we're talking about urea, that's $1,000 a ton, it's an $11,000 opportunity. And this doesn't take into account turn compensation, swap, all of the performance benefits that we know row by row control can provide. So let's look at one last example. Let's, let's see if we put this row by row solution to the test and do high rate prescriptions, what happens? Let's go to another operation, Tienda Agro, down in the south of Argentina. These guys are actually doing a side dress operation. And you can see here, again, with panorama and clarity, this wonderful combination, we can visualize what's really happening. And so on the left side of this field map, you can see the rate, the commanded rate of our electric meters. And you can see how he's making a very complex rate change throughout this field. At the same time, look at the right side of this map. This is the clarity magnitude. Notice how that magnitude, which is telling us how much product is actually flowing through the tube, matches our rate map. Do you think Juan at Tienda Agro can have confidence now that as he's applying a variable rate in complex zones throughout his field, he's getting the right rate in the right place? Oh, you better believe it. Juan was a very satisfied customer at the end of this trial. Well, I have to say we are excited to see how farmers across the Southern Hemisphere applying dry fertilizer on the planting pass can continue to get better and see the kinds of innovation that we've brought for years to farmers in North America. And we're also excited to continue learning here in North America, are there other applications, are there low rate starter fertilizers that we could apply during the planting pass to get some kind of yield response, some kind of starter response. For most of you though, sitting out there today, I know what you're thinking. Matt, we've got big bulk tanks, but they have tires and they need air to get that product from the tank to the row. Well, Will Frank's gonna come now and he's gonna talk about those kind of applications and how we can get better there as well. All right, <clears throat> thank you, Matt. So Matt did an excellent job of showing us just how powerful a row-by-row -row electric-driven metering system can be. But as he mentioned, us in the Northern Hemisphere, most of our granular fertilizer gets put down with some type of implement-wide metering system like what you see here. So those meter drives vary slightly, but the basic way that we calibrate the system is always the same. We'll spin that meter a certain amount of revolutions, we'll figure out how much pounds we dispensed, and we'll enter that into the display. And from that point going forward, we're calibrated. And so as long as this speed sensor tells us that that meter is turning the right speed to match our ground speed, we assume that we're getting the right rate 
across our entire implement. But with these implement-wide metering systems, this is only half the battle. We really need to distribute that product evenly across the width of that implement. So here are some examples of distribution systems that try to do this for us. On the left-hand side here, you see a tower system. So there's a big primary here, and it's usually horizontal, and we've got air, and we're blowing that product up that primary. It makes a bend in that J-tube. It comes up the riser and hits the tower manifold head. And from there, it should spread out evenly to our seven rows, maybe 12 rows, sometimes even 20 plus secondary lines that we have coming from that head. Sometimes we have horizontal diffusers, like we see this diffusing socket in the center here. Again, the product enters one end, and as it's flowing through there, it fans out, and by the time it gets to the end, we hope that it's evenly distributed so that every one of these runs is getting the same amount of product. If we think about our spinner spreaders, they've got flow dividers off the apron, there's deflector plates, and those spinners themselves, they have veins on them that are specifically designed to spread that product, maybe that 60 feet, 80 feet, or even sometimes 100 feet wide out of these spinner spreaders. But do we know how well each of these distribution systems are actually working for us? The only way we know for sure is to put bags below each outlet, run our meters, weigh these bags, and compare each row to one another. So do we do this each time we fill up the tank? Maybe each time we get a new load from the co-op. Do we do this once per day or maybe even once a week? Heck, have we ever done this check? This check takes time, right? And I hate to tell you, this check, even if you do it, it only tells you what your distribution system is like at this point in time. It doesn't tell us how the system's performing one hour from now when you're in the field. How do we know that things are still working well then? So if we're really honest with ourselves, this is what our vision looks like with these granular systems. We may have that shaft speed sensor that's telling us our meter rollers turn in the right speed to get our rate. We may have a traditional blockage system that as long as we see some amount of flow through that sensor in the last three seconds, you're gonna get a green light telling you that everything's okay. But do you feel good about the visibility that you have for one of the most expensive inputs on your operation? So we've been doing research since 2014 on these granular systems to try to understand their performance. And here's some high-speed video of wheat now here we're running at five miles an hour and we're applying 100 pounds per acre. So in this high speed video, you can see some wheat seed, it's rifling through here. It's going really smooth and really fast. There's other seed that it's running into other particles, it's bouncing off the secondary walls. It's taking a lot longer to get through this tube and ultimately into the ground. This is a really chaotic atmosphere and it's really difficult for the operator to see what is happening in this type of system. But this is a great example of what most of these distribution systems are like. And this challenge for the operator, it gets even more difficult when we add a second bin or maybe a third bin, where we're metering those products separately, but we're combining them into the same run and running them down into the furrow in the same location. What happens if just one of these tanks run out? You'd wanna know it, right? You wanna stop right then so that you can fill. So we need a system that can help us to tell us exactly what's going on in these implements. We need a way that we can see that we're getting the right amount down each run. And if we're not, we need to know so we can stop and fix it right away. So Precision Planning has developed a system that we call Clarity to provide us with that good visibility for our granular products. Clarity works with the 2020 and allows us to measure the performance of our metering and distribution systems. So if we take that tower riser example again, this is what Clarity looks like. We've got optical blockage sensors on every single run. 
So Clarity helps us look at the distribution down each of these runs. And we can also catch full and partial blockages. So here's an example of a partial blockage. We have a piece of fertilizer in that tower head that is partially blocking that run. We can see row 10 in this magnitude widget. It's lower, it's red, right? It's 1300. So magnitude, this is a metric that the Clarity system provides to us. And it's calculating that metric based on the percentage of time that it sees product flowing through this sensor. So plain and simple, the more product that that sensor sees, the higher the magnitude number. So to show you guys a little bit of demonstration, we've built this Clarity stand to the side of me here. This represents an eight row strip till bar, and we're controlling that with the 2020 system. So I've got my 16 inch display here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn our master plant switch on. And right away we can see these meters, they're turning, and we're dropping urea fertilizer down each and every run. So typically on this type of implement, the first thing we do is a visual check, right? So we can see, yep, we do have flow from every single run. Let's take a look at what a traditional blockage system would look like for us. All of these colors are the same. We have green lights on every single run. That's because each sensor is seeing one seed or one particle of fertilizer in the last three seconds. But if we go ahead and we activate clarity, now we see a different picture, right? If we look on the 2020 and that row by row magnitude map, we can see many different colors when we expect to see one color. We can see our average magnitude is about 2,900. We see a range there of about 700 across all of our rows and our uniformity is not 100%. We're down in that 99 to even 77 range. So as I mentioned, Clarity can catch partial blockages. So as I slide gate, She's I'm creating a partial blockage. She's the 2020 blow. alerts us right away with an audible alert that something's wrong. And again, if we look at that 2020 screen, we can see a row, red row failure on row seven telling us that there's a problem. If we take a look at the clarity stand itself to my right, again, we can see quite a difference in variation in the height of that urea fertilizer in all of these tubes. So 2024 will actually be the third year that we have had the clarity system in the marketplace. And we've had some great feedback and stories from growers. Here's an example from Sean. Sean farms in Ontario with his uncle Jim. So they've got this 1900 air cart and they've had this for many years. Now from the factory, this was ground driven, but they've converted this to hydraulic drive using precision planting's hydraulic motors and they're controlling it with our granular rate module. Their 1860 air seeder, they've got clarity installed on every single run. So this past year, they get ready for their first field. They drive their seeder the, to the field. They load each tank with seed and fertilizer. They get calibrated. They think they're ready to go. Sean's got to run to town for a quick errand. When he gets back a couple hours later, he pulls up along uh, the field. He pulls out his phone, loads panorama, pulls up his magnitude map, and right away he can see he's got a problem. The magnitude map is telling him that that right side of the drill is putting on 25% less product than the rest of the drill. This is obviously not what Sean and Jim wanted to see, right? So Sean goes ahead and he calls his uncle Jim and says, hey, we have an issue here, right? I can see on the magnitude map, that right side of the drill is not performing well. Jim said, yes, I noticed that as well. I got out of the cab, I pulled the meter roller and I couldn't find anything wrong. So I decided to go ahead and, and recalibrate and he confirmed that they're getting the right rate. But if you think back to the first part of my presentation, on these implement wide metering systems, we're spinning one meter roller and we're catching all sections at once. We're weighing those together as one. So that calibration, you're not gonna find problems 
with that distribution system on just a couple sections. So it wasn't until they pulled that meter roller a second time that they found the root cause of their problem was deflector plates just in two out of the six meter rolls. So these deflector plates, they're supposed to be in every location, and they had quite a bit of back pressure to the meter. Without them, those four runs, they were able to flow a lot more product, and that explains why the, just these two rows were 25% lower. So without clarity, who knows how long Sean and Jim could have gone until they realized that they had an issue here. So here's another example. This is from Chris. Chris farms in North Dakota. Chris has a 1910 air cart, and he uses that to feed his air seeder and this 16 row strip till bar that we're looking at here. This strip till bar has clarity installed on all 16 runs, and that 1910 air cart. It was ground drive from the factory also, and he's converted that to hydraulic drive and it's controlling that through the 2020 once again. So this front bin, that's loaded with Terra New fertilizer and he's applying 70 pounds per acre. That rear tank, it has urea in it and he's trying to apply 158 pounds of urea. So Chris had some really interesting stories and data here. So he was willing to share his 2020 files with us so that we can play those back. So you can see exactly what Chris was seeing this past year from the 2020 and his clarity system. So as we play this video, we can see that front tank, that Terra New tank, it's enabled, right? And that speed sensor, it's telling us that meter roller is turning the correct rate to get that 70 pounds of product out of his drill. If we look at his rear tank, it's also enabled. And again, that speed sensor is telling us it's, it's meter, the meter is turning at the right rate to get that 158 pounds per acre applied. But if we look at this row by row magnitude map, we can clearly see there's a problem in the center portion of this strip till bar. So Clarity told Chris that there was a problem. So he pushed in the clutch, got out of the cab, he pulls the meter roller. He's trying to find, maybe there's a hunk of fertilizer or a rock that got into this meter that could explain his problem. Unfortunately for Chris, he didn't find it right away. The meter roller goes back in, he climbs up his ladder, opens both lids, and he can confirm that he has product flowing out each tank. So then he decides to spin his meters, drop a small amount of fertilizer beneath each row unit, and then he goes back and does that visual check to make sure that he has product flowing from each run. But again, Chris wasn't able to find an obvious problem. So he jumps back in the cab, and this time he decides to disable that front tank. And so as he does that, we see his average magnitude drop from that 2400 down to around that 1700 magnitude. The dashboard mini chart there at the bottom, those green bars at the bottom of the 2020, notice how they've leveled out. So if we think back, when he had that front tank enabled, those center rows that were having a problem, they were already at 1700 magnitude. So remember, a system like this, we've got two separate bins. We're metering them separately, but we're combining them into the same run. And we're monitoring both of those products with the same sensors. So on those middle rows, when he disabled that front tank and his magnitude number didn't drop at all, this told Chris that he had a blockage in that front tank for those middle rows. And the problem ultimately was a mouse nest. Eventually, this cleared, cleaned itself up. But if Chris didn't have clarity, how would he have known that he had this distribution problem? He would have thought he was applying the right rate, but he would have been putting this premium fertilizer in the wrong place. So today, we've talked a lot about fertilizer in this session. But clarity also works well with our volumetrically metered seed. So here's an example. This is an air seeder that is blending uh, fertilizer and canola down the same run. If we look at that 2020 map, this farmer, Evan, he seeded the headlands first. 
And then he starts on the east side of the field and he works his way to the west. And we can look at this map and we can see that his magnitude numbers are dropping the further west he gets. And what's happening for Evan here is that as that product in his tank goes down, there's less pressure to force that product into the meter roller. And throughout the year, Evan learned that if he increased his fan speed, he could fix this problem and get even flow from his meter regardless of his tank volume. So to close out our session today, you know, I have to tell you, farming these days is more expensive than ever before. No matter where you farm in the world, fertilizer is one of the most expensive inputs on your operation. So if you have a uh, liquid starter system on your planter, or you're applying liquid 28 on your strip till, or sorry, your side dress unit, Precision Planning has a product called EMHD that can help you monitor and then control automatically the rate to each and every run. If you're that air seeder and you're blending your seed and fertilizer in the same run, or you're a planter and you're applying granular fertilizer, Clarity can really help you make sure that you're getting the right distribution and that product in the right location. And now is more critical than ever to make sure that we're getting the right product in the right place and in the right amount. So with that, thank you for your attention and enjoy the rest of your day at Precision Planning's Winter Conference. Thank you very much.